Hello there, welcome to Fridays at Noon. I'm Michael Chen, the executive producer and director for this talk show series. Fridays at Noon is a bi-weekly lunch and learn series that offers education on professional development topics to the University of Denver employees. For more information and to view past videos, please visit du.edu forward slash HR and click on the people development link. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. And bring your lunch. Oh, and bring your lunch. Welcome to Fridays at Noon. My name is Ken Pennock. I'm the director for people development at the University of Denver. And today we are going to be continuing with our series of the eight simple rules for managing conflict with Greg Geeson. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Greg. Thanks, Ken. Our manager of people development and also the creator uh, of this model uh, for tips, practices, and strategies for dealing with conflict. So today we're really going to be focusing on rules three and four. Right. So we're, we will be halfway through uh, the series uh, with today's session. And I do want to point out to viewers that you can view all of our Fridays at Noon shows as well as the first two uh, with respect to the eight simple rules of conflict at the People Development website and the Fridays at Noon tab. Right. So I would encourage you to please, if you haven't, check out the various shows that we have and in particular, relevant for today, the previous uh, the previous rule. That's right. So that, yeah, so that takes us to rule number three. Yeah, so walk us through uh, rule number three. Yeah, rule number three is called uh, Choose Your Style, and and it's based on Thomas Kilman's uh, inventory, mm -hmm. TKI, you know, which has become fairly popular, you know, in the American culture, especially corporate America. It's a conflict assessment, and it's based on five conflict styles. And so, you know, we're going to pick that apart a little bit um, because it's very relevant to what we've been talking about so far. So mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's walk through the model, and keep in mind the article has this model in it. So even though the lighting might throw it off, I'll, first I'll explain what the model, what these words are. And it's based on these two axes, 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 yeah, axes, yeah. Assertiveness, unassertiveness. So here's two on this side. Uncooperative and cooperativeness on the bottom. And so when you mix those mm -hmm. two together, what you get is up here assertive but uncooperative, which the forcing style we'll talk about in a second would fall. And sometimes yeah. that's referred to as uh, competition. Yeah, compete. Competing is okay. another name for that, which we we like this word better. Mm -hmm. um, then if you go down here, you've got the avoiding, which falls in the unassertive and uncooperative, and that's where that choice would fall into. Then we go down here, and we've got accommodating, which is unassertive but cooperative. Really, mm -hmm. you could say this side is relationship oriented over here. That's a good. This one. side is more individual me oriented here. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got at the top right, we've got you know collaborating, which mm -hmm. is both assertive and cooperative. You know, both those two together. And then in the middle, of course, we have compromising, which is kind of like a little bit of everything in the middle. And this is the model we're gonna we're gonna kind of use right now. And let's just break it apart. And here's what Thomas Kilman would say. Is that lighting okay? Is that, I think so. That yeah. looks all right. All right. Thomas Kilman would say that um, of the five styles, one he w it wouldn't use the word more natural like it's innate. He would say one is more learned than the other four. And maybe for some people there could be two combined together. But typically, mm -hmm. how you grew up. You know, whether it was your parents, the people that raised you, or the school system, or your friends, whatever else, as a young, young child, you probably start developing your conflict style. Mm -hmm. And so one of these five probably resonates with most of you more than the others, especially if you are truly being honest with yourself. Because um, a lot of times when people take the TKI assessment, mm -hmm. they all come out high on cooperative. I mean, is it cooperative? No, well, collaborating. Co collaborating, right. Yeah, and of course, you know, and pat yourself on the back. See, I'm a collaborator. Right. But, you know, I don't necessarily buy that. Uh, for me, that that's how you, yeah, those would be seem like the right answers on the assessment. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the how you handle conflict. So one of these five, and so the more you can resonate with one or two of them, the more you'll kind of know what your autopilot or go-to response. Why does that matter? It's related to what we were talking mm -hmm. about. 
Your autopilot response is the response you've used most of your life. And I'd say half the time it's effective, but probably half the time it might not be the right response. But because it becomes our go-to response, we get so attached to it, it becomes unconscious. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit, autopilot, it kicks in. And what what this model's here to say is, is there's four other styles. And one of the other styles may be much more appropriate for that given situation. If you can step back from the situation and look at these as... Instead of what style do I always use, what style would best get me to the desired results, mm-hmm. goal one, you know, mm-hmm. that um, where I want to go? And, and turn it into a cognitive process, a thought process, and not a reaction process. Which reinforces the latter. Which reinforces the latter. So, so let's just look at each of these, because in each of them, they all have an appropriate use and an inappropriate use. So it's not a good or bad thing, whichever one is your primary. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is when you're in conflict, are you choosing the right style or are you always going to your autopilot style, which could be damaging because then you're not thinking about it, you're reacting instead. So let's take forcing. So we know it's high assertive, uncooperative. It's really about your needs. This is about my needs. So let's talk about this together. So when would that be an appropriate response? You know, I could see and have experienced when uh, you need to make a decision Mm-hmm. fast if yeah. if there's an emergency or something yes. of urgency yeah uh, so decisions have to be made at times someone just has to uh, make the decision and yeah. take dir- and give direction yeah and or sometimes it could be if you're in a chaotic uh, environment mm-hmm. and it you know and it's just not working for people usually it's a result of there's a lack of leadership so mm-hmm. maybe uh, forcing would be a form of a leadership style initially to kind of rein people in Right, and to avoid having to get into discussion yeah. or to make themselves vulnerable. Yeah, very appropriate style. But then you, then the reverse is, when is it not a good choice? Yeah. You know, and, and I would say right off the bat, if you don't need to go forcing, it's not a good choice right. because it's one-sided. Um, you know, it's very assertive, but it's very uncooperative as well. If you can do collaboration with a group, why wouldn't you do that and get more buy-in and all those kind of things? And forcing also really inhibits the uh, building of trust as well. Yeah, and because forcing is about me and mm-hmm. my way, and this is how we're going to do it. Well, if you're trying to grow and develop people, if the forcing style is reflected through everything you're doing, then all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's going to be detrimental to the growth. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so that's kind of an example. And then when we go down to avoiding, avoiding is unassertive, uncooperative this is one of my favorites by the way yeah well a lot of people like they they go to avoiding because of uncomfortableness with conflict Mm -hmm. you know and when I'm uh, working with managers and we're talking about this I always like to ask is it ever okay to avoid conflict and it's amazing the number of people that will always say no it's not okay Mm -hmm. but it really is I mean there are times when it's very appropriate if the stakes aren't high if it's an issue that that doesn't warrant the emotion it might be much more behoove you to just let it be yeah i mean if there's no investment in the relationship Mm -hmm. in other words if it's just two people passing and an incident Mm -hmm. occurs you know my question would be why are you wasting time i'm even thinking about Mm -hmm. that that would be when avoiding because it's going to go away and dissipate because there's no connection right. to bring the two back together again. Right. Another good use of avoiding is if you get confronted and you're not comfortable with the confrontation, is to avoid yep. as a short term. That's right. To buy time to then revisit the relationship and the conversation when you feel, you know, when you've done rule one, two. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yep. Because then you're more centered and you're more in a much able position to create a win-win conversation. You know, and I think this is uh, really applicable to managers who often feel I have to solve the problem right now. Yeah. We have to address it now. And they really don't. Right. It, it's okay to let it rest a bit. Yeah. And in fact, and so, sometimes it, whenever there's emotion in a conflict, mm-hmm. it's usually good to have some time separation because it just kind of helps it dissipate a bit. Mm-hmm. So let's go to collaborating. Now, I know everyone loves collaborating. That, this is the darling you know, this right is now. A, I'm a collaborator. It's right. high Win-win. assertive. It's, you know, we are the world. It's cooperative. Right. Um, so obviously... Whenever there's relationships involved or where, you yeah. know, you want to bring energies together, 
yeah. totally makes sense, right? And great for problem solving and being creative. Yeah. But what's the downside? Well, you might not really get what you truly want as well. Because Possibly. you might be giving in. And, and also, um, it takes time. It takes time and it takes mm -hmm. commitment in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, you may not have a mutual commitment in the relationship, so the other person may have no interest in collaborating. Mm -hmm. um, or, um, you know, you just might find that uh, you don't have that kind of time. You're in a work environment where it's fast-paced, and, and to be able to take the time to sit back, right. talk through things, it might not be realistic. Or it's a short-term relationship, and you're not going to see them again. Right. It may not make sense to do the collaboration, mm -hmm. even though it sounds so great. Right, right. Um, now, compromising, you know, it, it's, it's a little of each in a way. It's, you know, you get some of what you want. You don't get everything what you want. Right. And, it, you know, uh, basically both parties have to give, which can be helpful in terms of uh, demonstrating willingness yeah. to build the relationship. Uh, but then this one also can lead to feeling I lost out because in a sense we do. We have to give up something. Yeah, and you know, typically you also gain something, you know, so it's mm -hmm. the middle of the road. It's related to these two in that you could have two forcing mm -hmm. people going at each other. Right. I want this. No, I want right. this. And then you know there's going to be no compromise or no, uh, they're not going to come together because right. they can't each get what they want. So then compromise is the end result. Yeah. Or in collaboration, kind of a similar thing, it's just not feasible to meet each other's needs completely, even though you want to, and so yeah. you're going to end up compromising. In that case, it might be more of a buy-in there. It mm -hmm. may be less of a buy-in if it came as a result of forcing. But that's kind of an example of compromising. And, you know, we'll talk about statistics in a minute. You know, and I think well, also just a, a point about leaders, often leaders feel that it's a sign of weakness if they compromise with their employees or their teams, and it's not. It doesn't mean that they're not being a strong, yeah. forceful leader. Yeah, right. So, um, then finally on accommodating. Accommodating, yeah. All right, so what's, what's the beauty of accommodating? Oh, I can speak to this uh, working with different cultures. Uh, when you're building relationships yeah. with people from different cultures, uh, in, whether from a different country, uh, or background uh, accommodating is very helpful mm -hmm. to build the in the initial stages of the relationship it's letting things go don't get in that example yeah. not getting wound up about a, a cultural difference you know and so, it's really all about relationship and it's all yeah. about really no ego on many many cases and um, it's also a great tactic mm -hmm. when the relationship has more value than the conflict at hand mm -hmm. and you know, we can talk about spouses with this, or previous yeah. spouses in my <laughs> case. But, you know, where, or, or for me, I like as my mother got, you know, into her 70s, into mm -hmm. her 80s, sometimes she could still trigger me, mm -hmm. or I could trigger her. Mm -hmm. And um, and what I kind of realize is that, you know, this relationship matters way too much to me to ever get caught in mm -hmm. any of those yeah. conversations so I would just accommodate because it's not worth it the relationship is much more valuable mm -hmm. to me than to nitpick on stuff yeah. and so I would yield but it was a conscious choice mm -hmm. now the reverse is when is accommodating a bad choice well when you're not I when you're giving too much when you're not standing yeah. up for your needs or yeah. Uh, in our world of work, our department needs. Yeah. We're always accommodating the other department or the other manager, and that can be very detrimental in terms of how your your team perceives you as a leader. And oftentimes what can come from the, the inappropriate use of accommodating is fear of a relationship or a dynamic, and so not wanting to go there. And the mm -hmm. difference between these two is for accommodating would be to let them be right, let them run right. all over you, right. just so that there's no conflict. Whereas avoiding is just to totally not even acknowledge, you know, right. that it exists. Well, um, you know, how do we know what, you know, if we have an automatic, which, you know, we do, how do we know what our automatic yeah. approach might be? You know, I, I would say, and I think we're probably good with this model. So, um, yeah, can everybody see? Oh, look, there we are. Hey, right we're, again. We're back. You can see um, now. Um, so. it, I, you know, you could say take the Thomas Kilman inventory. 
Yeah. But again, as you can already tell, I'm, I love Thomas Kelman material. I'm not a big fan of the inventory. But um, I would say it's just more of a self-assessment Yeah. first. And secondly, the people that you impact the most, I bet they have an idea of what style oh. they're seeing. Yeah. And I would be curious to know, you know, what they, I mean, I feel like I've yeah. done enough self-analysis. I know, like, of those styles, you know, I would say, honestly, for me, uh, it's probably avoiding or mm -hmm. forcing. And I almost feel like so, I have to apologize now, you know, but uh, yeah. avoiding meaning um, my relationship with my mother, who was, you know, mm -hmm. the primary caretaker, you know, was we would just not talk to each other when we got mad. That was mm -hmm. our, and I just kind of learned that. And so my go-to style is to shut down. Mm -hmm. Not healthy in a relate, not healthy in almost all situations, unless we talk, you know, we talked about yeah. when it yeah. is appropriate. And then forcing for me is rare that I would ever do it, and it looks different on every person. But for me, if it was. I, if I was blindsided by an issue or a conflict, it would be a defense reaction of, mm -hmm. you know, being defensive or fighting back. Um, but And the idea with this model, as we've been talking about, is, okay, so I know that about myself, right? I have to override those two autopilot responses. That's right, that's that tendency. Why, that's why it's got to be a conscious process, not an unconscious process. Because mm -hmm. if I'm not thinking about it, those two will show up one way or the other. I got to override it, and maybe they are the appropriate one, but yeah. I need to make an intellectual decision of which would be the best style to go with to get the results I want. Yeah. And that's how to use the model. And so um, the more you know what you think your core is, uh, the better, because when you see it surfacing, you can yeah. choose at that moment, is this where I want to go or do I want to? You, right. you know, and I also see uh, some relationships with kind of the task-oriented style of leadership versus the relational and how our conflict styles might support our preferred leadership style as well. Definitely. So, let me give, let's just put this, we'll put this to work right. so we're practical. Uh, although that was a practical, yeah. authentic example, by the way. So l here's some examples and, and what might be the best style and and those of you watching think of how you might or what uh, think of how you might actually respond to these and hear what we might recommend as the best and see where we align or not uh, so uh, happened this morning someone cuts you off on the highway all right well again this is just the world according to greg but i would say avoid yep. because you you know you're never going to see that person again. You don't yeah. even know who they are behind yeah. the wheel. And uh, why even get caught up in a dynamic mm -hmm. at all? Because, you know, we know that sometimes if it, it could heighten to a road rage right. incident. <laughs> right, right. And, yeah. um, and you're, much, you're much better off just letting it go, taking some deep breaths, and you won't remember the whole thing in an hour. Yeah, and that is illustrative of the idea of if it, which can be hard, but it doesn't matter. And it's kind of thinking of the big picture. Yeah. So, uh, okay, you have two coworkers yelling at one another, which never happens in our organization. Yeah, never by happens. Uh, well, if if you were the supervisor, let's say, mm -hmm. um, it would probably be a situation that would call for forcing right off the bat. Like, all right, enough. Mm -hmm. You know, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna talk to each of you. You know, and just take charge. Right. So it ends. Um, and that would maybe be the first level mm -hmm. of conflict style. And then you'd probably shift, you know, probably if you could to a collaborative where you're hearing each other's stories and bringing them together. You know, that would be the ultimate goal because mm -hmm. obviously that relationship matters if they're yelling at each other. It's probably having a very negative impact, not just on them, but all the people right. in the earshot. Well, and actually what that also raises is within the same conflict, you might be using multiple approaches multiple styles yeah to resolve the and that's issue. why you kind of have to be aware it's mm -hmm. almost like tai chi of what move you're doing and what you're getting back mm -hmm. now just real quickly though if you're one of the employees in the shouting match you know you don't want to go forcing right because <laughs> yeah. you already are if right. you're yelling or the other person could be yelling at you and you know it could be different ones it might be avoiding just to let's stop and mm -hmm. let's take some time away from each other let's get back together you know yep. whatever you would do but uh 
forcing would not be a good choice in that case. Okay. A couple more. Just uh, uh, This one is timely in, in this year, 2016. Your 80-year-old grandmother is needling you about your political choice for candidates, and you could substitute anyone for grandmother. Yeah. Well, well and, so. of course, we talked about it a little bit uh, in that, uh, truthfully, do you really want to go toe-to-toe with your, <laughs> your grandmother? grandmother? And, and what would be you the might. benefit? You might. I don't know. And it's one of those topics, you know, politics, religion. You'll never and, win. You'll never win, and it's just going to create right. a judgment and disagreement. So I'd say accommodating yeah. or avoiding, but accommodating might be, I know, Grandma, I know, I think, you know, that's important to you. I'm just, you know, right. it doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm just going to... Yeah. whatever and, and not push back so there's no if you don't push back there's no fight right it, then you it's, know but if you push back all of a sudden I mean, which is what they want they're baiting you. that's right that's right like, grandma's baiting you yeah yeah and we probably we know people that we work with uh that will do that as well yeah and so i have family members that will do that yeah i do too so yeah <laughs> Next week, we'll talk about interpersonal relationships. <laughs> so uh, here's you've had a misunderstanding with the coworker or, or your significant other, and the tension is thick and, un, and yeah. uncomfortable. And it's you know, just I'm going to state the obvious, right? Yeah. But it's a relationship issue. So if it's a relationship issue, you really need to go for collaboration right mm -hmm. off the bat. And if you can't get total agreement, then you mm -hmm. bump down to compromise. But, yeah, whenever it's a relationship issue, that's probably what you're looking at. Yeah. Well, so with this, I mean, should people take the TKI to find out their conflict styles? Is that a... I mean, you, you kind of you touched can. on this. You know, you can. Um, I don't... It's not necessary. I'm not a big fan because I don't know what it really tells you because it gives you a scenario and then you give a response. And it's not necessarily talking about your life and how you handle and how you grew up. I think that's more of a powerful conversation mm -hmm. Is to sit back uh, and to really just kind of reflect on you know childhood and, and difficult relationships you've had and do a self-assessment and then if you're if you've got a significant other or a family you're close to or or colleagues or friends you know it's a good team building activity mm -hmm. for a group that works together in particular t to maybe and take to Thomas through. Kilman mm -hmm. but to really more talk about it yeah of what style do you use what style do I use what works when do we get in the trouble you know having those kind of conversations and it's a safe way to it's, do it yeah you could even bring up issues but in that context and the beauty of that and this yeah. ties into team building and just having those conversations is you have them when you're not in conflict mm -hmm. so you can talk about it freely because when you're in conflict you know obviously there's more dynamics involved yeah. So then, uh, with respect to these styles, are there, you know what what does the research say about are there more effective or less yeah. effective? And I'm I do wonder also about the role of culture, yeah. how it impacts how we might approach conflict. Yeah, and that actually in the research I found wasn't a factor, so I don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. But some of the ones that popped out were managers who use avoiding or forcing. So if you remember on our model. Mm -hmm. It's both on the left the, side. It was the uncooperative, yeah. You know, the, remember the, forcing the left, and avoiding. left side's about me, the right side's about the relationship. So uh, managers who these were the primary conflict styles um, uh, tended to create higher relationship conflicts within their work group. Uh, and if you think mm -hmm. about it, because they play off of each other, if you're forcing and you're controlling the shots and they don't even develop relationships right. or, or they're skewed or the relationship problem would be with you because you're using that style. Or if you're avoiding, you're letting the inmates run the asylum right. and that creates whatever strong personalities take over and that creates relationship issues. Yep. So both of those as a primary style that shows up in the workplace um, does not work very well. And when you're forcing, uh, that can often lead to avoiding from the other party because right. they don't want to even deal with it. Yeah, and you know, so. speaking about forcing, they even said that the forcing style creates higher level of task-related conflicts. And what that means is um, because there's so much, so much control in the forcing style, people don't get a chance to really develop relationships. So when they have conflict, it's more around job stuff because that's the only mm -hmm. place where they exist. 
because there's you know there's very little relationship factor there, um, which is not good because that affects productivity, mm -hmm. right? Um, they also found that this will be no surprise. Collaboration style reduces relationship conflicts and improves performance. Mm -hmm. And here's the surprising one: is they found the same results with compromising. Hmm. Which is surprising, but then the reason they say that is because in compromising, technically, even though you referred to this a little bit earlier, they say that people, there's really no loser per se because the focus is on the compromise, not the what you didn't get. I see. And so people don't feel as... That they lost necessarily. Yeah, right. I see. And so it tends, tends to, I guess, impact productivity in a positive way. So. You know, in my comment about the, the culture piece, uh, not that this is what Thomas Kilman uh, got into, but, you know, when you think of the U.S. culture, we value very much, generally speaking, the forcing competitive. Yeah. And then in other collectivist cultures, you might see a lot more of this. Yeah. So that's a, an element, too. Which is why it would be a good activity for a multicultural department. Mm-hmm. To go that's through, good, you know, just to create greater understanding that's good, and you that's know, sympathy point. and uh, compassion for each other. Right. Well, great. So that that is uh, <clears throat> rule three. Yeah. And you know, bef uh, just again, I do want to uh, restate that the the PDFs are on the People Development webpage, so you can not only get the recording but the documents. Yeah. Um, Which are well written, I might. They, well, they are. We keep hearing that. <laughs> if that's, I say so myself. That's good to know. <laughs> so, okay. So, rule four. So, it's take the initiative. Yeah. So, And this is a, really a short and simple, sweet rule, which is why we combined it here. But, you know, the gist of it is, is um, it, it's just a reminder to not get caught up in the dynamics, the drama, mm. the ego aspect of conflict because ultimately what that will do is get you stirred up mm -hmm. and then your whole body will take on the conflict not just your mental your emotional and physically maybe even spiritually who knows and then it's just like all in you and 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 the gist of this is is that that's not good for anybody mm -hmm. and to be able to see that and sometimes go the what's the what's the word the um to do the right thing or to go the higher road mm -hmm. in a relationship and not get caught up in who started it who needs to apologize uh who's at fault who won uh, yeah because that's all right. ego 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 right and and mm -hmm. so many of us you know and i'm guilty of it myself you know get caught up in the ego component of conflict and it's what's bad about it is not only does it create separation and then you start going up the ladder more and more mm -hmm. to feed the ego to make them more wrong and all those kind of things um, but then you, you tend to not even address it you, you separate more from yeah. it and you're wearing it which physically it starts to take you down you mm -hmm. know and we know there's research that, that even you've done yeah. in some of these Fridays at noon about stress Mm -hmm. on the you know our difficult manager right. and the stress that creates and the symptoms heart attacks uh yep. you know um, the physiological responses that brings stress um, right. all those kind of things can result from people holding on to emotions that are unsettling mm -hmm. all because you started you need to apologize you need to be the one you know to bring it up and getting caught in that dynamic yeah and sometimes I think we feel like if we can make the other person wrong, and we do this in a lot of ways, we go up the ladder, then we tell people about our mm -hmm. ladder and how they, what they did to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we do this in customer yeah. service stuff all the time, yeah. right? You, and you replay it too. That's just replaying it over, which reinforces yeah, it. Yeah, and you just vent and vent, um, and then you get to be right. But what it also does is it separates you off from any kind of resolution because you're less inclined to go resolve and the worst part is is you're wearing the conflict on your psyche yeah and it's taking you down so you're actually taking yourself down in the process because you, you let you just let it not you just you just yeah. didn't attempt to resolve it and so the, i guess the point is yeah. it doesn't matter you know who started who should go first who 
uh, if, if they make you so mad or if they're getting away with something or if they will even even talk to you. It does not matter. What matters is for you to initiate the conversation anyway. To resolve. Because what you do is, by doing that, oh, well, you do a number of positive things, but you release whatever you're holding on to mm -hmm. so you get to let it go, regardless whether they're cooperating with you or not. Because it would be better if they did cooperate, but even if they don't, you're still you know, shedding a whole layer there. Yep. And the benefits mm -hmm. are you're taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. you're managing the relationship, because you know you were upset about something and so you're bringing it back you're creating accountability in the relationship because whatever occurred you're also showing not only that person but you're role modeling to all the people around you that um, you want to resolve it and so you're role modeling that piece of it and yeah. you're holding them accountable because they can't avoid or anything else that they know now that when there's an issue with you you're gonna bring it back and so you're kind of setting a good precedent in that relationship because, you know, conflict, by the way, is very positive if it's done constructively. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole series is how to do it constructively so you can have conflict, right. not so that you don't have conflict. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. You, and if you can do it well, you know, it's going to be beneficial for everybody to where it's... You know, and as you discuss this and the holding on, I have found when we've been working with managers and employees, when the manager has truly been at fault, uh, when that manager's style, behavior, skills have been addressed, mm -hmm. often it's the employee that won't let go of what yeah. occurred and let the manager and that person move forward. Yeah. Then we come back around and have to work with the employee. Yeah. So it, it, it's very, this is very common. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's hard. And we all know from our, our real worlds, our personal worlds, that this goes on. And, and really what I'm saying is think of yourself. Be selfish. Yeah. You know, instead of harboring bad feelings, because mm -hmm. you think it's just a way of, a, maybe it's some, for some people it's a power game. You know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not going to be their friend anymore. I'm not going to socialize with them. I'll show them. Right. But by saying that, you're wearing it. And you're taking yourself down in the That's process. Right. And really, is that That's what right. you want to be doing? Because um, you're creating a lose-lose scenario when if you could be the bigger person, and mm -hmm. I know that sounds hard, but it's really just letting the ego go and yeah. seeing what's going on. There's the mindfulness piece, which is seeing how it's feeling, seeing how it's affecting your conversation. You know, when you get home at night, are you complaining about yeah. work? And what's that about? And, and is it related to pent-up feelings? And, um, and is that the person you want to be? And to be the bigger person doesn't mean that you're a victim or that you are allowing yeah. people to mistreat you or to be inappropriate yeah. either. Because they may and, say, I could care less. And yeah, it was your fault and whatever. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know what? You should still be very proud of yourself because you unleashed the burden and you were true to yourself, yeah. your role modeling affected, you know, you're never going to always get people just jumping on board. Right. But you'll feel different mm -hmm. regardless. And you can say you tried and you, and you did crack the door open. They may or may not take advantage of that at a later time. Mm -hmm. You know, let me give you a quick example. Yeah. A personal example is when I was a consultant, you know, I had a client, um, I was coaching, I had a client and I was coaching one of their uh, employees. And, and because I was coaching her, I kind of felt like I had some leverage to be able to be a little more direct mm -hmm. in my emails. So she had missed, you know, a couple sessions in a row. And, you know, part of what we were talking about is commitment and all this other stuff. Yeah. So, and, and in hindsight, I might have handled this, I might handle this differently. But at the time, I sent an email and was very constructive, but I addressed the two missed meetings. Nothing good ever happens via email, you know. Don't I know? And uh, and little did I know is she exploded and fired an email, not only fired an email, but CC'd all of the directors and all the way up mm. to the CEO of her company and my supervisor <laughs> um, uh, and just fired, unleashed this hailstorm on me. And, oh. um, and I was fuming, actually because I so much wanted to get in this with her, you know, mm -hmm. because it was such a contradiction of what our whole relationship was about. Yeah. 
And so I was at that point, also goes for the conflict styles, right? Because I was in a forcing, I wanted to just for, you know, attack back. And then I went to really rule four, mm -hmm. not that like I think in rules, but rule four was I'm like, you know, I could see what my body was doing. I, you know, that vein yep. in my neck was sticking out. You know, I, I was tense. And I thought, how do I really want to wear this conflict? Mm -hmm. So I thought about it. Then I did rule one, you know, what, what's the goal? What, the goal. You know, rule two is going up and down the ladder about making her wrong, you know, and as using kind of all these rules. And then when I came to the conclusion, you know what? I, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. And I apologized. I said, I'm sorry. I had no idea that, you know, that... Um, but it was a landing on her that way. Yeah, and that's not what I meant. And, you know, and I just kind of... And that's all I did. And you know what? It didn't matter what she... How she responded because I just felt totally relieved mm -hmm. by doing that because it was so tense. And, of course, the email I got back was an apology. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's like, it's, I'm sorry, I overreacted. <laughs> I overreacted. You know, all right. of a sudden, we're, are we good? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that quick, it resolved and then by rule four. And it's done. Because I, I was... I, I could have easily got drawn into that. So they're really the themes I'm hearing from this rule in particular, but really all th the three previous is it's it's really a, a around awareness, but it's a response autopilot, and and yeah. which leads to a lot of the damage. The yeah. how do we get better at this one? Because this is probably one of the toughest ones we all yeah struggle with. You know, um, obviously by if you do rule one, two, and three, you know, and you start getting effective at that, it's going to impact four because you're going to have heightened mindfulness and you'll be able to override and right. see that. Um, you know, the other thing too is there's nothing wrong with apologizing. And I don't mean like how I apologize, but I mean like if a relationship just goes in the wrong direction, it's just stopping it and going, I, this is not comfortable for me. Can we regroup? Mm -hmm. Let's figure out, you know, yeah. and just initiating, which yeah. is what rule four is, and, and being the one to say, I don't, I'm not comfortable the way where this is going. Can we, you know, and the only way you could do that is if you let your ego down and just realize this is about a relationship that matters. And so I'll, I'll be the, it's not even about being the bigger person because that sounds like an ego statement too, you know. It's really just, I don't feel good mm -hmm. this way. I want it to go away. What can we do? That's really also demonstrating true leadership yeah and I mean, a lot of leaders for some reason that's hard yeah because they they it can be viewed as a sign of weakness yeah in their mind and yet i would say it's all about a relation it's a collaborative yeah. type of yeah. statement really yeah. wow. so there you go wow so this is i mean the we're we're halfway through so we've covered four yeah. of the eight simple rules of managing conflict and you know we're going to be going through the rest of them this fall so I look forward to that. Yeah, and not only that, that, of course, we have the articles, right? That's right. All eight, right. and we're going to be teaching the class. Yeah, I want, you know, we've got the classes on, on conflict. Yeah. And I just, I can't encourage you or welcome uh, all of you enough to, if you're running into these situations, please contact us in Human Resources, Greg yeah. Geese and myself. Uh, mm -hmm. We will work with you and work to get to a resolution that, you know, hopefully meets the needs for all parties involved. So reach out. Yeah, and read the articles because I heard they were very well written. They are very well written. <laughs> I, you really should check out those well written articles. All right. So with that, thank you. It. Yes, thank for you. Today. And thank you all. Uh, have a very good rest of the day, and we will again be revisiting or finishing the, rule, the final four rules during the fall. Thank you.